You've been seeking answers from every dermatologist, doctor, and all over the internet wondering what on earth this unbearable skin issue is. You know something's up, and you've been suffering and silenced for far too long. This podcast is going to bring awareness to the brutal reality that is topical steroid addiction and withdrawal syndrome. It will give you practical mental and physical tips to help you along your journey and provide you the strength you need to push through each day. You'll hear from real people battling this illness, as well as experts in the field, and I'm also going to share with you what's happening as I battle and conquer TSW. You are not alone, you're not crazy, and you will heal. If there's one thing I know, it's that anyone going through this hell is a warrior. My name is Jennifer Powers, and I welcome you to TSW Journey to Healing. I uh, am out of breath a little bit, but I just walked in the door literally from a power walk, um, which turned into a sprint at some points because of the bees or the gnats outside. It's a little bit buggy here as we approach the summer months in the east coast of the states, Um, but I wanted to bring this episode to you just raw and unedited um, because I was doing a lot of thinking as I was uh, doing my walk. Sometimes I listen to some pumped up music. Sometimes I listen to worship music. Sometimes I listen to an audiobook. And uh, this time I actually didn't listen to anything. I listened to the sound of nature. I was alone with my thoughts. It was kind of a meditative state. And I was just really reflecting on this past weekend. And, uh, you know, today is Tuesday, May 31st. So I am recording this episode again for you real time, day of the release of this show, this episode. And uh, this past weekend, I'm super itchy right now if you can hear that, so bear with me. Um, Again, I'm not in my typical setup with my good microphone. I'm just raw dog in this (laughs) for you. Um, But the heat sometimes uh, and the friction of, you know, your legs moving and walking definitely uh, makes me itchy, but I'm trying my best to stay physically fit and active and live my life as normal as I possibly can given the TSW state that I'm in. But this weekend, this past weekend was Memorial Day weekend here for us in the United States. And I had, it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weekend weather-wise where I am at. I was actually at my family's uh, shore house on the Jersey shore and, um, there was just so many boats in the in the water and uh, jet skis and wave runners and people fishing and people on the beach and it was it was beautiful i mean total 10 out of 10 um but i had a terrible flare up on saturday and what day was saturday saturday was the 28th so a few days ago and it only happened at night and it was it brought me to tears if i'm being honest with you um my parents my son my boyfriend um you know, it's, it's so upsetting. We try to shield our loved ones from the pain that we're in, uh, so that they don't worry. At least that's what I tend to do. Um, maybe that's an oldest child thing. I don't really know, or a gen thing. I don't know, but, uh, I do my best so that people don't really know, um, all the time how really uncomfortable and terrible this really is. But I, it broke me Saturday night and I haven't had one of those moments in a while. Knock on wood. Thank you, God. But, um, And by the way, please don't hear me saying that and thinking that you need to be like that because what I have learned through all these years of adulthood and the past several years of therapy is emotions really can't be stopped. They have to flow through us. It's the release of these emotions that help us process and make progress. And so sometimes what I do is wrong, Um, trying to be the strong one for everybody. And sometimes we're humans and we're fragile, all of us, every single one of us. And so it's important to just be our vulnerable, authentic selves to ourselves and also never be afraid to show that to others. So um, make sure that you know that. But anyway, I was uh, mostly trying to to do that because my son's only 11 years old and I don't want him to see his mother falling apart all the time. He knows what's going on. He's very, very self-aware. And there's only so much (laughs) that we in the TSW community that we can really hide um, because it's just so physically aware, obvious and emotionally obvious, you know. Um, but anyway, I, it was about eight o'clock at night and I just went into an itch frenzy and not, I have definitely been making progress. Um, you know, tomorrow is June 1st and June 1st will be, I will be hitting my seven, seventh month mark of topical and oral steroid free. So yay for my seven month anniversary, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been a doozy 
And um, it was kind of upsetting because I, I felt like I was losing control on Saturday night. So drove around, grabbed some Benadryl, popped two Benadryl in my mouth, and it did take the edge off eventually. And and thankfully, I was able to get a somewhat of a decent sleep. Um, but it, it just really rocked me. I just broke down in my kitchen in front of my parents, in front of my boyfriend, in front of my son, and I just... I let it happen. I couldn't, I I wasn't even going to try to stop it. I I started to at first and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to stop these tears from falling. Um, And it's just so, so damn uncomfortable. I mean, and you guys, you know that if you're listening to this and you're in the thick of it, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And so the next morning, knowing that I wasn't going to get much sleep, you know, I told, I told my, or my mom came up to me and said, you know, do you not want to go to church tomorrow? And I said, no, absolutely not. I 100% will be going to church tomorrow. I don't care how much little sleep that I get. Um, You know, during this whole spiritual journey that I've been on, uh, over the last couple of years, I found a couple of really great churches that I watch virtually online. And the one church that is near my family's beach house vacation home is one that I have been very excited to finally get to in person. And I have not been able to. So this Sunday, um, the 30th, just a couple days ago, I I got myself together and I went. And I am so, so, so glad that I did because it was such a beautiful, beautiful service. But they also did a tribute to our fallen warriors, fallen soldiers, men and women of the armed forces. Of And they went through, it was a beautiful like slideshow presentation of all the wars that we have gone through and how many lives have been lost. And when they got to my grandfather, I lost a year ago. He was 99 years old. Oh my gosh. Um, well, actually he was just two days shy away from his 99th birthday if we're being factual here, but I'm going to consider it 99. And um, he, he was a World War II vet. He served in General Patton's army in the 13th Division Armor, and he um, played saxophone, actually, for General Patton. So it was very cool. I have a lot of... Uh, my other grandfather, my, my dad's dad, also served, and he passed away only when I was seven years old, so I didn't get... I wasn't fortunate enough to really get to know him so well. But uh, anyway, I want to... Before I get into what I want to get into, I want to give a huge shout-out and salute and... A just genuine, genuine thank you. If you are someone who has served, if you have a loved one in your family that has served, if you have someone you know that has paid the ultimate sacrifice and the ultimate price, uh, I just genuinely have to thank you so much because we would not be able to live free if it wasn't for the brave. And um, as somebody who absolutely supports the military, Um, and just like, I just get so struck with awe when I think of how much bravery and sacrifice goes into this. Um, when you, when you make that decision and you make that choice and how hard it is for the families, um, you know, whether you are, get to come home or you never get to come home, it's just, it's just really humbling. And, um, I just want to honor you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The last slide of this presentation though, at church was, uh, it said death by suicide, and it said 22. And it waited a few seconds, and I thought, well, they definitely got that wrong. And then all of a sudden, right next to the number 22, it said per day. 22 deaths by suicide per day from those that have served in the military. And it just like broke my heart. And as somebody who's in this TSW community who's had very, very dark thoughts, which is the point of this episode, I just want to say that you're not alone, but your life is so precious and you have such a purpose for your life that that's never, ever an option. It's not a solution and there is help for you. So please check the show notes and... Um, reach out if you do need help and assistance because there are so many more resources for you than you could possibly know that could really shed a new light for you. So that leads me into this episode. And what I want to say is I want to tell you about the night that I wanted to die. Now, I'm, 
a very, as you can probably tell, I'm a faith-based woman. I have a great relationship with God and my Savior, Jesus. And um, my faith has grown so much just in the last couple of years alone. Um, but I had a night in TSW back in, I think it was month three. When, this, when I'm done recording this, again, I'll put the details in the show notes if I can find it. But I believe... Since I started topical steroid and oral steroid free as of December 1st, 2021, I believe this was in February, possibly March. And I just remember exactly what happened. I, it was uh, midnight. I, I was trying to fall asleep since 10 p.m. I was lying there itching, itching, itching. It wasn't happening. And it started getting worse and worse. My son had been asleep for hours at this point. I'm a single parent, you know, I live at home with me and my son and he was sound asleep in his room and I got up from my bedroom, the floor, I was trying not to make the floor creak um, and I ended up walking out into like the living room and I started pacing back and forth, back and forth. I remember thinking, I wish I was an octopus with (laughs) like eight arms and legs so that I could be itching every part of my body because it was from head to toe the itch was so so bad when they say it's this bone deep itch it's exactly what you would imagine if you could itch and get all the way down into the bone maybe then you would finally satisfy that itch but this is not an itch that people you know People that are not in TSW, when they think of an itchy rash or poison ivy or a bug bite, it's that those kind of itches, they can be fulfilled by scratching, right? My son, when he's like, oh, mom, can you, can you scratch that on my back? And I'll scratch it. And he's like, oh, okay, good, thanks. And he's satisfied and the itch is gone and he feels relief. This is not like that. And you're listening to this, which means you or a loved one are suffering with TSW. So you know that I am completely spot on when I say that, that it's just un, unbearable. And it's not like anything you can really describe. I mean, other than what I just said to a loved one or a family or a friend or somebody that wants to understand what this is like, it's just nearly impossible to truly explain it well enough. And it's if you're not walking in someone's shoes that has this, you really have no possible way of knowing how awful it really is. But that's what was going on for me. I decided to try to distract myself and put the TV on but I was itching so bad. At this point in time, I didn't yet have my nails like gel nail polish or, you know, my nails were really ripping open my skin. I was bleeding. I actually was bleeding so bad that I went back into my bedroom. I took a a bath, a towel from, or yeah, from my linen closet and I put it on the couch I went to my freezer and I grabbed as many ice packs as I had, which wasn't nearly enough, but I think it was about like four or five. And I laid on the couch and tried to numb myself. And I was, I was crying silently so as not to wake up my son, you know, in his, where his bedroom was. And, um, I was like talking to God and I was just crying saying, make this stop, make this stop, please make this stop. Please take this away from me. I... I remember, you know, the clock turning from 12.30 to 1, to 1.30, to 2, and I was freezing cold. My lips were purple. I was just so uncomfortable. The itch was not going away, but I was freezing cold. I was, um, the TV was not distracting me at all. I actually then turned to the It's Ann Facebook group. I wanted to, I was about to text my mother before I did the before I got on Facebook, I was going to text my mom. I felt like a little girl and I just, I wanted my mom and I wanted someone to come take care of me. And I was about to text her, but this was like two something in the morning at this point. And I stopped because she's a very light sleeper. I know she doesn't keep her phone on do not disturb. So it would have definitely made a noise and probably woken her up. So instead I went to Facebook. I went to the It's Ann Facebook group and I Um, I believe I made a post where I just said I was having one of the worst nights of my life with this and I just felt so alone and I was really scared and I was having very, very bad thoughts. Now, when I say that, and I say this to say, like, again, I'm going to repeat, you know, earlier, 
suicide is not something to take lightly, to joke about. It's incredibly serious. It's so, so tragic. Um, and there are so many resources out there, you know, for you, if you are feeling that way, or if you have felt that way. And if you have felt that way, just know that you're, again, you're not alone. I was sitting here thinking that, okay, we just lost some power. Weird. (laughs) If you heard that beep, um, Oh no, I'm losing power in my house right now. This is crazy. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry, ADD. (laughs) But what I'm saying is um, that if you have had those kinds of thoughts, now I was having those thoughts. Was I actually literally thinking of, of ending my life? No, because I have a little boy who needs me. But was I thinking and feeling that I really need uh, I need to, this needs to stop. This needs to end. I was just having these very, very awful, awful, awful thoughts. So I go to the Facebook group and I, I, and I got a lot of messages from people and, um, in, on my post and a couple people were like, Hey, I'm awake, reach out. And I remember there was this one person that I said, okay. And I started chatting, you know, Facebook messenger chatting back and forth. And it helped me so much to know that there was somebody awake at a different part of the world that was suffering just like I was. And and they were talking me through it and talking me off the ledge. And I never went to bed that night. I stayed up the whole night. Um, I ended up being able to get a little bit of comfort probably around 4, 4 4.30 a.m. And I watched, I turned on the TV. I put on something funny, I think. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um but something to make me smile. That was what the person suggested. And it was a good suggestion. Um, no, like murder mysteries or anything dark and heavy like that. But, uh, it was, it was the, one of the hardest nights of my entire now almost seven months of this journey. So I say all this to say that, you know, this is like, yes, debilitating and horrible and painful and all these things, but the mental anguish and despair that we feel is so heavy and so real. And I don't want to make this a very dark and ominous type of episode. I want to, I always said, I want to give you some hope. So what I want to say is that the next day when the day began, which obviously one night blended right into the next day, since I didn't sleep, it made me realize I just got through something that could have taken me out. That could have absolutely, I could have you know, I I could have let those dark, really horrible thoughts win. And I didn't. And it's definitely easier said than done to fight through this. But when you come out on the other side, I just kept holding on to that hope, that vision of my body is going through a war right now, but it is doing its best to heal itself. And I, what I need to do is support it as best I can, but also take care of my mental, emotional, and spiritual needs because that is crucial to getting through this thing alive, to getting through this thing at all. So my suggestion is to lean on fellow brothers and sisters, fellow warriors in this community. I am always here for you. You have that whole It's on Facebook group, but connection is the key to, to really battling and fighting your way through this because it is a battle. It is a bloody battle (laughs) and it is, we're in the trenches and it is so hard and we can feel very, very alone and isolated, but we're not. And it's important that you know that and you remember that. So I hope this message spoke to someone, maybe it spoke to you. And once again, if you are somebody who is suffering with really, really um, suicidal thoughts, bad thoughts, dark thoughts, please, please seek help. There is so much help and resources out there for you. And there's so many support groups. And if you need any advice or help with that, check the show notes, but also feel free to email hello at tswjourneytohealing.com. And I'd be happy to point you in a good direction. Stay healthy, stay whole, stay positive as best that you can. And know that every single day that goes by, you are one day closer to this being a thing of the past for you and to this being an incredible story that you're going to get to share with those. And you are going to feel so proud of how brave and strong and how much of a fighter that you really are. God bless you. Take care of yourself. 
Thanks for listening. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. With your help, we can spread awareness together. So please share the show with anyone you know who may be struggling with a medical condition and using steroids to treat it. And be sure to check out the blog for helpful resources to aid you along your TSW journey at tswjourneytohealing.com.